Tesla, the electric car company listed in the US, is on the rise following its surprising third quarter results. We noted that although revenue fell, they turned profitable and we thought we should have a look. We were surprised by what came up and realised there was so much to discuss that we've made a short video for each of our governance, accounting and peer performance metrics. As usual, before we go on, I must remind you that under Hong Kong SFC regulations, we can't make recommendations to the public and none of what follows should be taken as investment advice. So let's look at the accounting. But before we start, please bear in mind that accounts are produced by management and not by the auditors. Typically, the auditors only verify that rules are being adhered to and not that the assumptions being used are either prudent or fair. And remember that Tesla's auditor, PwC California, has recently been fined for poor quality auditing. Tesla's accounts are naturally very assumption driven simply because it's a rapidly expanding new tech company that usually loses money and the cash flow is distorted by both upfront payments, i.e. customer deposits, and long tail liabilities, i.e. warranties and the Gigafactory commitments, each of which requires a lot of estimation. In a situation like this, there's always a temptation to bring revenue forward and push costs into the future, boosting profits. Having had a look at Tesla's accounts, we think they're doing exactly that. Since 2014, revenue deferral rates have dropped, which is bringing revenue forward. But depreciation rates and warranty costs are down, which delays costs. Some of this is a result from the changes to GAAP accounting, but far from all of it. Warranties are a particular problem because Tesla issues 5-10 to 10 year warranties, yet we note that warranty costs are using up most of the warranty provisions within a year. If, for example, their batteries or any of the other new tech they use has a problem as they age, provisioning is going to prove inadequate. All in all, it looks as if management is working hard to supercharge the gap results and obscure what is possibly a fairly pedestrian reality. We think there's far more accounting risk embedded in the accounts than investors realise. If Tesla had been consistent with its accounting and business practices, third quarter gross margins would have been under 13% and it would have reported a lot. If you want to get more information on some of the issues we've covered, please visit our website using the link below, where we've also highlighted some of the key points in their most recent filings. If you'd like to know more about our research, please visit our website or send us an email. Alternatively, to keep up to date with our reviews, subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for your time.